in 2021, we hosted Nikita Gupta, who covered an interesting topic on how to get into Fang, which has now become Mang Companies. It was on March 9th, 2021. And why am I talking about March? Because March 8th is celebrated as Women's Day across the world, and it is one of the most happening events. And TGV has been at the forefront of celebrating March month with pride, with a lot of insightful conversations. And in March 2022, March 8th, we hosted mother and daughter duo Nirja Ganesh and Sneha Ganesh, who covered a specific topic related to content creation to boost your social presence. And fast forward March 2023, we have dedicated an entire month. to feature women leaders and this march 2024 we are driving a special series through which we will be releasing one episode every saturday and are you curious about what series it is going to be hold on for a moment let me tell you one more stat before we get that so did you know that over 45% of our featured speakers are phenomenal women And today we celebrate the wisdom, resilience, and leadership of women who are making waves in their respective fields. So this March 2024, we are coming up with a special series, the Courage Catalyst, and get ready to get inspired, to be empowered as we delve into insightful conversations with this remarkable women leader. Who is going to enthrall us with her amazing, inspirational insights? and how to build courage how to be a better individual so let's shine a spotlight on her journey and achievement right here on the guiding voice podcast and i am i'm going to introduce you all to fara ismail she's a dynamic founder facilitator executive coach speaker and author driven by a vision to inspire and empower emerging leaders especially women to embrace their unique talents and lead with confidence Drawing from her own transformative experiences, Farah embarked on an entrepreneurial journey with Interact Consulting, and she passionately developed the Integral Growth for Women in Leadership program aimed at amplifying the leadership potential of female leaders. And her coaching philosophy centers on the belief that everyone is a leader in their own right, capable of inspiring excellence in others. And Farah takes pride in fostering new mindsets among leaders. encouraging self awareness courage and the pursuit of a purposeful courageous life and in fact this has been a long awaited conversation but you know good things take time to happen and it is happening now in a big way we are not just doing a single episode with her but a series of four episodes so let me repeat i am excited to announce the launch of the tgv courage catalyst series which will be released every saturday this march So I bet you don't want to miss even a single episode. So as we prepare to delve into our conversation on our first topic today, taking the first step is an exciting twist. Let us tickle Farah's brain. So Farah, <laughs> get ready for a rapid fire round of random words. I'll mention a few. Love to hear the first thing that comes to your mind in response without thinking much. Are you ready for it? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So here comes the first bullet. Curiosity. It's a cure for boredom. Invention. Our mind. Future. Crazy good. Book. It's a book about you called Ultimate Coach. So if you want to read a book about you, this is it. Mm-hmm. Courage. Contagious. Coaching. Sacred. Universe. Never gives up on you. Leadership. Serving others. Role model. Someone who leaves a footprint. And the last one is success. It's inevitable. <laughs> love it <laughs> love it love the first rapid fire round and thank you so much for participating in this and before i welcome you let me welcome the audience so folks welcome to the guiding voice podcast series where we embark on transformative conversations for a better future i am your host navin samala dedicated to making this world a better place through valuable discussions that add value not only to your life but also to your career and thank you so much for tuning in Farah Ismail, hearty welcome to the Guiding Voice. How are you today? Thank you so much for being part of our journey in shaping the lives and careers of millions across the globe. Let me pass that on to you, Naveen. Thank you so much for being the inspiration since 2020. I'm feeling such a deep connection. 
um, and your energy already. So I'm really honored to be here. Thank pleasure, you. Pleasure to have you. And uh, let's get the ball rolling. And as always, I would like to begin with your key milestones. So please share with our audience the key milestones which have yeah. led to your path today. So it's really interesting because I have lived a life of adventure and I can only say that my life lessons have become the catalyst for my greatest personal and professional growth. So in this whole journey, I see three big milestones, uh, all three very distinct. So I've had three major careers in my life and one was in the aviation industry because I uh, chose to, to join an airline, travel across the globe expand my vision. I came back completely changed uh, because I was exposed to so many cultures. I came back to India, joined an IT company for a short stint until I decided it's time for me to build my own business. So it's been 25 years that I've been in the space of training, facilitation, coaching, and I haven't looked back. So my journey has been really, you know, my adventures have taken me far in all the three of them, but I can only say that uh, all of them have taught me one thing that the biggest adventure you can take is the life is to live the life of your dreams. So I would say dream on. Dream on. Super. Yes. Very powerful. I think uh, this is something which will stay with me for a long time. And let's um, get into your success mantra. So other than dream on, what has been your philosophy? What have been the contributing factors which have led to your growth, immense growth and especially the power to coach others and inspire many people across the globe in terms of grooming others to lead their organizations, lead their teams so effectively. So I I think one is definitely, you know, the lens with which I look at the world, my perspective. So I'm a hopeless optimist and my secret mantra is to focus on my attention and my energy on all the things that I want and not the things that I don't want. So it's really looking at where I want to go in the future. And I, I believe that is what has helped me to turn any challenge or any situation into a gift or an opportunity. So that's number one. And throughout any adversity, that's what has shaped everything that I do. The second is, we talked about it, it's one of the names of our, part of the name of our series, it is Courage. I think what I have done over, over the years is choosing courage over comfort, willing to be uncomfortable because choosing discomfort is where the growth happens. So I want to say that that has also been a big, big secret or a mantra for me to really fall in love with my imperfections and just be vulnerable in this journey of being unapologetically me. And the third one, which has probably been the most important is uh, community. At one time, I thought I could do this thing called life alone and uh, manage everything, all the roller coasters, until I realized that there's a huge, huge power of genuine relationships. And that's what has probably kept my boat sailing, the power of community. And in that, I would say the key thing in all of this, the foundation is love more, judge less, and just go deep. Those have been my ways in which I'm living every day. Love more, judge less. Amazing. Go deep. <laughs> yeah. Go deep. <laughs> so, even I, I believe in the power of community. In fact, uh, community is the driving force behind the guiding voice. Like we have PGV Inner Circle Community, which uh, comprises of most of our, many of our speakers, not most, but many of our speakers who have been featured on the, all the three different platforms. They have been the guiding source and they have been the driving force in terms of who are actually propelling me to move forward on this journey. And I'm sure many more milestones are to come. And thank you so much for sharing your success mantra. Now let's also talk about the toughest lessons that you have learned in your entrepreneurial journey. I think it's been close to two and a half decades right? ever since you have been on your own. You know, there's um, this whole thing that clarity is power. So I believe that every time that I sabotage my success, it came when I wasn't clear about where I'm heading. So uh, one of the things that really shifted for me was getting so clear of what I want to create. And so that's the question I kept asking. What do I want to create now? And 
for me, that's the where the shift happened, that I was able to look at the people who were supporting me, the resources that I had currently. That's what helped me. Otherwise, I would say what stopped me in uh, and challenged me was myself. Right. One was not being clear. The second was making my business a hobby business. So if something happened in my life, that would be a full stop. You know, so I would attend to one. So I didn't create powerful systems or really looked at my business as something which I'm here for the long game. And so I want to say that it's uh, it's a long game. If you're in the long game, then it's um, it's not going to be easy. But if you're there, then you're going to really make it. So for me, that has been one of the ways in which I have shifted from some of my own ways of stepping um, into sabotaging my business. And is there a specific uh, moment or a setback where you felt, yeah, why am I doing this? I think, did I make a wrong decision? Did you ever feel that? Because at times we get uh, forced by our circumstances or somebody, people around us, Right. I, I often get a um, question like, why are you doing that? Especially when you're not making enough of what you're supposed to make by now. But my passion keeps me moving. So likewise, I would like to understand. Did you come across it? Mm, I have really spoken to a lot of people who have that challenge mm-hmm. where uh, I think it's about listening to somebody else's uh, direction or choosing a life that somebody else chose with you. I want to say that I was really lucky, Naveen. I grew up in an environment where our parents really allowed us to, you know, hope, dream and create that future that we want to create. And we made our mistakes. So um, whatever I chose, so I have very, very distinct journey in my life. And I just look at it as a a university in which I learned that my life is like a university, you know, and Uh, So I look at it that way. And so everything is a decision, right? And if I start looking back and saying, why did I make that decision? Then I'm really not living the moment. So for me, it is really looking back and only taking the lessons, right? What did I get from there? So that's really served me. So if I look back at my journey now and you're asking me to see, I'm sure there are a lot of moments when I would have second guessed myself But I think it's just my attitude to say, let me try, let me move on. That has helped me to test it. Mm -hmm. So this, it's it's a playground for me, you know. So I'm happy to experiment and test because experiments never fail. Mm -hmm. So I would say that probably I'm looking at it from where I am today. So it looks like everything was beautiful and an experiment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the moment, it might have felt like, oh, I wish I had never done this. So we're all humans. I, I, I. Yes, we all experience that. Great. I, I love it. And um, now let's just start getting into our series, Courage Catalyst. Yeah. How do you define the Courage Catalyst? And what is it like to be a Courage Catalyst? Yeah. So if you think of the word catalyst and you think somebody, it's like something that sparks change, right? Yeah. Like uh, it's someone who provokes change and sparks a reaction without being consumed in the process. So I believe that uh, to be a catalyst, first of all, let's look at a catalyst. To be a catalyst, you need to have the commitment, commitment to spark the change and create some kind of results. So I'm discovering that if I want to create transformation, it requires great commitment. And that's why I'm committed on this journey of this is what I'm going to be doing. The second is creativity. So if you want to be a catalyst, we need to see possibilities and bring uh, something into existence even out of nothing. So I find that it's a fertile ground to create miracles. So that's how I think about being a catalyst. And the most important thing is having the courage, courage to share these ideas with others, to speak about what you are inviting people into. And I believe that it helps to shift or change thinking of people Mm -hmm. uh, about how it's usually done. You know, so I, I really like to disrupt the thinking And so a courage catalyst is that for me. And I would say that how it's been, it's been exciting. It's been a a lot of learning for me. A lot of, um, um, you know, things that I would say, gosh, why did I even try that? But not attaching too much feelings about it or emotions and just moving on. So I would say the powerful shift I've made is serving without attachment to the outcome. So just being in that space. 
amazing and uh, it's so inspiring and i i love your thought process completely and i can uh, really resonate with you on those aspects and uh, now let's talk about the courage catalyst series uh, that you have uh, launched in the form of um, 10 editions of powerful articles full of wisdom and honestly you may not believe it after designing this series i bumped into your newsletter and <laughs> i was really intrigued by the content and uh, maybe you can share with the audience who have, might have already read your newsletter like talk to talk to them and talk to me how this series is going to be different from courage catalyst newsletter editions so when i uh, a year ago when i committed to join a school in london mm-hmm. uh, it was to build a prosperous ethical and a coaching practice it's the number one prosperity school in the world and i uh, decided that's what i want to be part of and while i started experiencing the magic there i just decided i want to give it all away and i want to share it in the form of the the nuggets i'm having the shift that's happening for me and it was a huge commitment it's i'm still there i'm there till uh, we graduate in march and so that's where the series started mm-hmm. so that's where you would find a place where i'm sharing what i'm learning from this school and it's all about really stepping into my courage to do things that i've never done before in my business so that's what i that that's what you'll find there but what you and i are creating is something magical it's for the month of march it's for uh, inspiring women to be the change they want to see and to know that change is a door that it opens from the inside so whatever we are creating is to help really you know unlock this courageous mindset and that's what they can experience here something fun and exciting and something to take back Okay so we have been talking about courage for the last few minutes so let's focus on some basics like in general why do you think people and when i say people it it is not gender specific not just women i'm referring to everybody and why people in general lack courage you know i was reading this thing about the five regrets of the dying you know when people die the number one regret is i wish i had the courage to live a life more true to myself and not the life others expect of me and also there's one of the top 5 is i wish i had the courage to express my feelings so i find that when you you know this is something that uh, is common to everyone that we let our life pass by and we decide that one day we're going to do something and that one day is um never comes or we're waiting for some day so that's one and i believe that Uh, another really important reason why you know we don't see people really sh- shifting into living a life of courage is because they are uh, really not clear about who they are and you know what they want to create in the world so i would say that a couple of things would be really looking at what so a lot of clients that i speak to uh, speak about you know the things that stop them is their own self doubt and fear and i'm and all this continues right i'm not smart enough i don't know enough i you know i uh, i'm too old i find that our inner dialogue is what comes in our way of making those shifts and sometimes we think that it's a huge mountain to climb and uh, we start looking at the destination and not the journey and i would say that's the little shift that we want to make that really helps people to just know that courage is not a huge leap or yeah. and climbing off uh, you know a cliff or flying flying from a mountain but it is the small things that take you forward and i just want to add one thing there's a beautiful quote which says that like you learn s- swimming by swimming you learn courage by courage that's how simple it is so you take that one step <laughs> yes yes yeah, that that one um, leap of faith as mentioned that one step right that will lead to miles of journey and uh, Yeah, even yeah. I, I come across few people who think I need all the resources and the right time to take that particular first step, but that right time and right resources will never come. Like I, I can. Right time, I want to be ready, and I, I need to be ready as well. So, <laughs> um, the time is now. That's what I want to say. Today matters. I think that's exactly. the shift. Exactly, mm. and, and we improve over time. It's, it's not just that we have to be perfect. We have to have everything ready. That is never going to happen. you build the aircraft as you fly they say so uh, you know me from the aviation industry that's the ex- ex- example i can give yeah yeah good one 
Okay, now let's talk about any specific case where reimagining their approach led someone to significant personal or professional growth out of your executive conversations. And you may or may not name the person, but how how did their approach shift? So I would like to share an example of a very courageous woman who came to mm-hmm. me, and uh, she's a senior leader. And uh, when she started working, she had a belief that. whatever she starts she has great intentions and then she loses momentum and energy and it's very frustrating and that led to her having a really tough pattern that narrative in her head that i don't believe i can do it i'm not consistent it's not possible uh, and really being very harsh on herself and this impacted everything else in her team and her business and what she could uh, change it's that small thing i want to say mm-hmm. but it's a big thing um uh, i want to say that that inner voice she had was so loud she wasn't yeah. even aware that it was sabotaging her yeah. to this extent mm-hmm. and she started with a commitment i think it was in our first conversation it was how we create powerful commitments mm-hmm. and there's no expectations it's all about creating commitments because they are very courageous to make commitments to not stay where she is and to see possibilities and for really being okay to disrupt the status quo and on her journey this was what was so powerful that she embraced a new identity of being a possibilitarian that's the name she gave herself mm-hmm. and she decided i can do anything i can set mm-hmm. my mind to and the first thing was being kind to herself the results she had from this journey of course it's not a short journey uh it was a huge shift from being that frustrated to fulfilled and uh i just think that she has had incredible level of success with her you know what she's able to achieve in her region with her team with her family so it's she really got a return on life with that so i would say that uh the courage to take that decision is the number one decision mm-hmm. nothing else matters the action comes later you need to yeah. first decide she made that decision she's an amazing client super i think you must be super proud <laughs> absolutely i love my clients and uh, i love who i work with and what i do uh, so yes yeah. very proud okay. all right this has been fabulous conversation and it's time for us to add some more excitement some more spice to the episode so with your consent i'll bring in the second rapid fire round are you ready <laughs> If I say no, <laughs> yes, I'm ready. You have no choice. I'm as excited. <laughs> I have no choice. <laughs> okay, yeah, all right. So here comes my first bullet. If you could have one gigantic billboard anywhere with anything on it, what would it say? If you can dream it, you can do it. Wow! And true dreams will <laughs> never let you sleep. That is my mantra. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. I loved it. Yeah. That, that. Yeah. Here comes the next one. If you could swap your life with someone for a day. who would it be and why oh it has to be uh ruben gonzales who is a uh, olympian making history uh-huh. right now he's training to become the oldest winter olympian and um, i would love to do what he does in the sport of luge so watch out for him oh sure i think that's a learning and uh, can you describe yourself in just one word feel less <laughs> and what is the weirdest food combination that you secretly enjoy the secret is at home i enjoy a a drink which is made of avocado celery and spinach it's so yummy and no one in my home thinks that oh wow <laughs> yeah <laughs> good good and what is the craziest thing on your bucket list i want to give myself permission to take a year to travel the world wow and i wish you get a chance and you I create we'll definitely do that and let's do one more interview after traveling all around the world <laughs> absolutely perfect and all the best for her and that brings me to the last question from this rapid fire round so what will be one electronic gadget or a fantasy gadget that you like to see or invent yourself i think a gadget that filters out all those unproductive thoughts running in our mind we have 60000 thoughts in our day just imagine if it easily just gets rid of it oh it would be so amazing to have a mind so clear <laughs> good one yeah. loved it <laughs> loved it amazing and uh, after that amazing rapid fire uh, let's flip back to the mainstream and this will sure. be kind of um, last question part of for, for for the part one conversation so what will be 
uh, your key message to our audience on taking the first step i would say have the courage to say yes and to say no uh, that's that's the key for me and just wake up to your power your potential and possibilities wow wake up to your power and potential and possibility superb superb amazing message uh, for and i thoroughly enjoyed this conversation and how is your experience being hosted on the gardening voice platform firstly i want to acknowledge you navin uh, thank you for inviting me here thanking me uh, you know helping me experience the power of inspiring the world and the mission of yours is amazing and i also want to thank kavita my friend who connected me to you so um love the power of creation and what you're creating i'm loving being part of the series thank you thank you so much for and on this note i would also like kavita garla once again i think i would i must have thanked her over 50 times on my podcast because she has introduced me such amazing set of individuals who have been a great source of inspiration not only to me but also to the entire yeah. tgv community so thank you once again for being the great character kavita keep uh, sharing <laughs> keep sharing and keep connecting me with amazing individuals i'm glad that you are part of yeah. my network and thank you for up uh, i really appreciate you thank you david time out of your busy schedule and uh, uh, working with me on this beautiful series which is going to definitely inspire all the leaders out there and make sure that they take their first step and also build something amazing in their daily lives both on the personal front as well as professional front thank you once again so i'm looking forward to the part 2 of the conversation for up i'm looking forward to it thank you so much navin All right so friends that was our episode with Fara Ismail and this is part 1 of the series Courage Catalyst TGV Courage Catalyst and stay tuned for the second part next Saturday and before we jump into the fun trivia section we have a quick request in case if you haven't already subscribed to The Guiding Voice TGV podcast request you to subscribe because subscribing keeps you updated on new episodes and also if you have enjoyed this conversation request you to share with at least three of your friends or colleagues who would also like the guiding voice so spread the knowledge and help others grow just like you now let's get into the trivia having had an amazing conversation with executive coach para ismail as part of our courage catalyst series we are going to cover a lot of nuances about coaching i thought i would give you some information background information related to origins of coaching and you know professional coaching as we know it today has evolved considerably from its early origins and while the concept of coaching is in some form has likely existed for centuries the modern professional coaching industry began to take shape in the later half of the 20th century and there is influence of timothy galway's in a game the modern coaching field owes a significant debt to the principles outlined in Timothy Galway's book The Inner Game of Tennis which was published in 1974 and Galway's approach wasn't just about tennis technique it was about psychological or the inner game and this focus on the mental aspect of performance marked a paradigm shift and laid the foundation for many contemporary coaching techniques especially in performance and executive coaching and third is about Thomas Leonard's pioneering role Thomas is often credited as the father of modern coaching. In the 1980s he transitioned from being a financial planner to applying sports coaching principles to business and personal development and his work has led to the establishment of the International Coaching Federation ICF in 1995 and which played a crucial role in formalizing coaching as a profession and setting global standards. One of the lesser known yet fascinating aspects of professional coaching is its interdisciplinary nature. It's a confluence of strategies and theories from diverse fields like psychology, business leadership, sociology and even spiritual guidance. So this amalgamation has allowed coaching to become a holistic practice addressing not just professional growth but personal development in a comprehensive manner. these are all the facts from my side and if you are aware of any other facts related to early origins of coaching i would love to hear from you in case if you are watching this episode on youtube feel free to comment there or if you have found this episode on some social media platforms do not forget to comment there so folks that's it for today and thank you so much for tuning in and also for being part of our awesome tgv community 
so i would love to hear from you so do not hesitate to share your ideas feedback and topic recommendations and even guest speaker suggestions either through social media or you can email us at thegettingvoiceforyou@gmail.com because let's create content that resonates with you i am your host navin samala lifelong learner and my goal is to have impactful conversations that improve not only your life but also your career and the next time take care stay inspired and remember the future holds great things because the best is yet to come goodbye for now see you on the next episode with another amazing guest